three, two, one. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, Amen. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are here with a very, very special video. We got the legend of One Piece. Yeah, hey man, we say it all the time, what a time to be an anime fan, but in this case, what a time to be a subscriber of this channel too, I'm not gonna lie, it's always a movie when we get to do these, but especially this one, like, oh man, I'm not gonna lie, if you're not new here, then you already know we're One Piece fanatics, but if you are new, hit that sub button, we have a lot of bangers coming, but hey man, like he said, we're here today with the legends of One Piece. And truth be told, there's a lot of legendary things about One Piece from start to finish. Like, we're here to start with the top three things that we love about One Piece. Just starting with my number three. I'm not going to lie. Again, there's a lot of things we love about One Piece. There's a lot of things that are crazy. There's a lot of things that are amazing. But to me... At number three, the thing that I love about One Piece the most is the cast. Like, I feel like the cast is extremely different from top to bottom. And, like, just from start to finish, from the main cast to even the background cast. Like, there's so many unique characters that could easily be a main character in their own series. Then you want to talk about this series. Like, there's so many just amazing characters. Like... Truth be told, I think One Piece easily has the greatest cast out of any anime. And a large part of that is because of Luffy. We'll circle back to that. But, yeah, at number three, I would have to put the cast. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Like, just the uniqueness behind them. Like, you got characters using three swords, eight swords. You got niggas 10 foot tall, 20 foot tall. You got hell giants, yeah. different races, fishmen, like... They're so creative and they're also unique in their own way, but also the depth that they get, like, it's truly amazing. So I, by default, respect that One Piece definitely has the deepest cast. Easily, easily. But for one of the things I love about One Piece, I would have to say that even though it is a shonen, the action is not the focal point. And... Because the action is not the focal point, it actually makes those fights a lot better. Like, even especially when you want to look early One Piece, when you look at the fight itself, and we talked about this several times on the channel, but if you look at early One Piece and look at the fights, they're not the craziest thing in the world. But we're still acting like they're the craziest thing in the world because that's not the main point of what we're watching. It's the story around it. It's everything that goes into it when it gets to that point, too. Literally, it's everything. The emotions riding on it, like the background Story. behind why they're fighting. All of that amplifies those fight scenes. And I feel like the fact that the fights themselves are not front and center, the clear-cut most important part, I really love that about One Piece, especially with how well that they did it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Like, I'm not going to lie, I just by default respect that. Like, a lot of people... Got it fucked up when they want to look at Shonen. Oh, you're just battle charge. You just like fights. Fights are kind of just always been the back burner thing of One Piece, which is why for a long time people have disrespected One Piece fights, saying that they're not the same as all the other ones. But one, that's Cap. But two, One Piece just focuses on everything, which is part of the reason why there's so many episodes. So I definitely respect that. It's one of the things they do best. Mm -hmm. but for me at number two when you want to talk about things that I love about One Piece the most I kind of already said it but just to say it again for me at number two I would have to say how it is one of one like One Piece is truly different it's truly amazing it's truly unique and honestly I've never seen anything like it from start to finish like it's one of the greatest fictional adaptations i've ever seen like manga wise and anime wise it's so creative it's just everything but yeah at number two i would have to say how it's one of one hell yeah there's no anime that was before one piece or will ever come after one piece that will be 
anywhere close to what we have here. Like, mm-hmm. and it, especially with the fact that it's so different but so good at the same time. Because a lot of animes, oh yeah, and this is not to really throw shade on other animes, but I'm just saying like a lot of animes they try to go outside the box and it doesn't work or doesn't work as well. But One Piece, the entire anime is outside the box and everything hits like every aspect oh, we cried of over a ship's like funeral like Literally. really let that sink in like one piece is different bro it's truly different like if you don't watch one piece it's hard to explain that a ship's funeral first things first a ship having a funeral is hard to Literally. explain but a ship's funeral had you in tears that's really hard to explain to someone who doesn't watch one piece but that's just the fraction of just how different One Piece truly is from start to finish. Every character is different. They dress different. Like, their powers are different. Everything about One Piece is different from start to finish. So, yeah, I would have to put that at number two. Hell yeah. By default, respect. And I actually love that one. You know what I'm saying? But for my second thing that I love the most about One Piece, I would have to say how... Oda goes out of his way, like emphasis on out of his way to give us absolutely everything about the One Piece world. Like even when we're in the middle of a main story arc, he's literally doing it right now. Like in the middle of a main story arc, we got Elbath in the background. You got Law and Blackbeard in the background, the government doing whatever the fuck. Like they show everything at once. But it all comes together so well. And I feel like that's a huge reason why One Piece is one of one, going back into that one. So I would have to say that for number two. Hell yeah. You know, that's a really great one. And it's just by default facts. Like, again, it's part of the reason why One Piece is long as hell. But they leave no stones on, on, like, they leave no stones untoned. Like, Mm -hmm. One Piece is truly different, and it's truly great for that. Like, the fact that it you get to eat all the food and the lore, when you want to talk about how deep the lore is, it's arguably deeper than Star Wars, yet they give it to you all of it without taking away from the story. Like, I definitely respect that at your number two. I think One Piece is the king of that as well. Hell yeah. But my number one, just by default... When you want to ask the question, what do you love about One Piece the most? You I just by default. We, we might. We might. I just, we probably just by default had to put it at one just because, I mean, the nigga is just different. Like, the nigga is so amazing. Like, I'm cheesing right now. He's cheesing right now just because that nigga is one of the greatest fictional things of all time. But, at number one, we have Luffy. Absolutely. Like, Luffy, you know, we were literally cheesing. He's joy boy. Like, everything oh. about Luffy brings joy. But he's also badass. He also has a heart of gold. Everything that you would want in a character, Luffy is that. No matter if you want to look anime, outside of anime, real life, it doesn't fucking matter. Everything that you would want in the perfect person... I don't want to say perfect, but as close to perfect as possible. It wasn't Luffy. Wrong. 100%. Shit. So definitely had to put him as the biggest thing I love about One Piece. Like, even as good as the cast is, Luffy still carries. You know how crazy that is? For the best yeah. cast, for the best cast in fiction to still carry them. Yeah, insane. that's actually ridiculous. Like, that's actually ridiculous. One Piece easily, we can't stress this enough, One Piece easily has the greatest cast of all time, yet Luffy carries that shit on his back. Like, arc by arc by arc, he's been the MVP. Do you know how ridiculous that is? Like, that's actually amazing, especially when you have characters like Zoro putting up 50 and almost every single arc. Like, mm-hmm. That nigga Luffy is literally the MVP of One Piece. Like, that shit is just amazing. And he is easily the best thing about anime as well as the best thing about One Piece. So, we just by default had to put him at one. 
Hell yeah. Make sure you check out our Legend of Luffy video, too, because that was a banger. We went into more depth as to why Luffy is the GOAT. But Hell yeah. Just to segue a little bit into our next question, there is a lot of things that are different about One Piece. You heard some of them in our last topic, but what was the one thing that told you One Piece was different? Ooh. For me personally, there's a lot of shit. But there's a lot of <laughs> shit you can go here. If I had to say the moment I knew that I there was something here that I was really going to love that was so unique from everything else that I've seen, I would have to say, and this is kind of a cop-out answer because it's kind of the whole arc. But I have the same thing, maybe. I would have to say Arlong Park. <laughs> Like that arc is not a cop out. I got the same <laughs> shit. <laughs> that shit was different, bro. Just everything yeah, about that it. That shit like, was different, nigga. From the fact that Arlong is a whole ass shark, nigga, and there's a whole race of fishmen that are pirates that are working with the government, and the government is taking money from them under the table, <laughs> enslaving these people. Let alone <laughs> Nami, her people being enslaved and. She, she has to rob other pirates by herself in order to get enough money to buy her people back. Luffy comes in after being robbed by Nami and still saving her. Everything about that art was poetic. It was amazing. It was flawless. It like, was perfect, bro. Like, it was truly the first major arc. Like, initially, I was going to say when Luffy carried Nami and uh, Sanji up Drum Island, but... That's kind of when I started thinking to myself, wait a minute, that's around episode 100. There's a lot of shit that happened earlier in One Piece. And I started scanning the East Blue Saga. And that's when I realized the Bartier had a lot of signature moments, but Arlong Park was just different, bro. Like, mm. that's the moment, really the arc. Like, I see why you say cop out, but that's the arc. If I had to say moment in it, it's when Luffy put the hat on Nami. Yeah. But... The entire arc is just truly what told you it was different. Because you could then say Luffy versus Arlong itself. Like, the entire arc told me, yo, I need to put on my seatbelt. One Piece is just different. Like, One Piece is the greatest anime of all time. But it didn't tell me that right away. It told me I need to get ready. Because niggas may not be capping when they say that. Hell but, yeah, hell yeah. Like, nigga, I remember literally midway through. It was when... uh. Uh, Noriko was telling Nami's backstory and it was that episode where I was like damn how many episodes is in One Piece we're still mm -hmm. this early and One Piece is hidden like that bro oh, so man. much shit. Oh, niggas man. need to stop playing with the East Blue Saga because the East Blue Saga was fantastic one Piece itself is fantastic, and since they've been on the Grand Line, it's been different. But the East Blue Saga itself told me One Piece was different. But yeah. Arlong Park in it was the major arc, like, easily the best arc in it, easily. 100%. But just to segue, I'm not going to lie. One Piece has done a lot of amazing things to the community as well as the real world. Like, Vegas just had the globe not too long ago. One Piece on the largest TV screen. It left a huge impact, but it's not that surprising because One Piece has left a huge impact in the anime community, especially when Gear 5th happened. But even before it, One Piece has always been one of the three kings of anime when you want to talk about the big three. But now it's just the true king. But when you want to talk about how it's impacted you, it's impacted us in many different ways. And we're here to pretty much answer that question. So just off of that, how has One Piece impacted you? For me, One Piece kind of taught me a lot of things. Like, the biggest one is it taught me how to be free. It taught me just to, like, really chase my dreams. Like... I would really have to say One Piece lit a fire in me to chase my dreams. Like, that's the biggest way how it impacted me. Like, it taught me that if you really want to be free, if you really want to be the best version of yourself, then you have to be bold and you have to put your foot forward and chase after what you want. 
and everything you want is going to ironically fall into place afterward. And you're going to ironically end up your best version. You're going to have an insane glow up just from chasing your dreams every single time. But yeah, One Piece definitely impacted me that way. It truly pushed me over the edge to chase after what I really wanted. It lit that fire in me. By default, respect that because it impacted me in the same way. But another way that One Piece impacted me um, is just the fact that One Piece ties directly to the real world. Like, it covers controversial topics and things that we still deal with today. Like, a lot of the stuff that they talk about, you can pull it directly and it's happening right now in the real world. So, it's an interesting way to show, like, the problems going on and how one small group, because there's only 10 niggas, like, it, can, yeah. it shows how one small group can have such a big impact. Like, the Straw Hats literally go saving one country at a time and setting them free from their shackles. Like, and it really just showed me just how, because everyone says, like, there's no superheroes in real life. Like, you don't have to be a superhero, but one small group can do a lot of good in this world. And we just so happen to be a small group. You know what I'm saying? Like, Hell yeah. We're here to change the world in that aspect. Maybe not to the Luffy aspect, because shit. But we're definitely here to change the world. So I would say One Piece has impacted me in that way. Shit. I respect that. Especially like... Like you said, there's a lot of real world aspects in One Piece. Like the relatability is through the roof. Like I'm sure we all see ourselves in Luffy as well as if you have your own clique, like our clique, you see the Straw Hats. So I definitely respect that One Piece has impacted me in that way too. Like that's just some real shit. Hell yeah, hell yeah. But let us know how how has One Piece impacted you personally? But just to segue a little bit, we've briefly talked about a lot of amazing moments in One Piece. And One Piece, not only does it have a fuckload of amazing moments, but there's still more coming. So, just off yeah. of that, what are your top three favorite One Piece moments? If I had to say my third one, and... Some people might look some type of way at putting this at three, but there's a lot of moments, goddammit. Like, this is top three. This is top three. Yeah, like, it, it's like, tough. It's tough. But if I had to say number three, I would have to say Luffy punching the Celestial Dragon. Now, I understand a lot of people probably have it won at least two, but... It, top three is a tough ass room. I'm just gonna say that. But it's, that it moment, has to be top three by default, hundred percent. But that moment, like the symbolism behind it, Hachi being a fish man being discriminated against, and then Luffy stood up for him and sent that nigga back to the manga panels. Like yeah. everything about it, the the scene execution in that scene, everything about it was so symbolic, so badass. It was perfectly executed. It hit crazy watching it the first time and i would definitely say that was one of my favorite moments in one piece shit that was definitely one of mine too like you're gonna hear that moment very very soon but i by default respect that like at the end of the day i'm pretty sure that moment's in everyone's top five so to hear it in your top three just makes sense and i definitely respect that at your number three but at number three for me, there's a lot of moments that could have went here. Like, the more you think about it, the more damning it becomes. But this moment is really damning because, in my opinion, it's one of the greatest signature moments in One Piece as well as anime because it has one of the greatest voice acting moments of all time. But at number three, I would have to say, I would have to put I Want to Live from Robin from Water 7. Like, that moment was just extremely fantastic. It was heart-wrenching, but it was in a beautiful way, too, just because of what her words were. Like, they cut like a knife, but it was still poetry. That shit was just fantastic. 
let alone everything that was going on around it. All the straw hats posted, Luffy shouting, Usopp burning down the flag, like then Robin just declaring she wants to live. CP9 just on the other side staring down the straw hats. Like, I'm not gonna lie, that entire moment was just extremely fantastic. And I would have to put that at three hundred percent for top three favorite One Piece moments. I love it. That scene, when you want to talk about emotion, we said it multiple times on the channel. I'll say it again. That is the best voice acting that I have ever heard. And I've watched a lot of animes, a lot of uh, animated films, all of that shit. I have never heard voice acting of that caliber before. Like, Hell yeah. that never was incredible. Like, the emotion behind it, as you said, it was literally heart-wrenching. Like, my shit, like, literally hurt listening to that shit but it was amazing and looking at the scene around it like you said the face-off between the straw hats and cp9 soj king shooting down the government flag declaring war that whole scene was amazing and it kick-started one of the best arcs in one piece so Easy. definitely respect it but for my number two this moment just so happens to be in the same arc but I would have to say Luffy's finisher oh. on Lucci. Like, that moment, and this is the first moment I was thinking of when you want to talk about when I realized One Piece was different. But I was like, that's so late. Like, I already yeah. knew One Piece was different before that. You know what I mean? So, type shit, type shit, type shit. But this, boy, was this different. Like, everything from Luffy getting hit with that Six King gun and Luchi walked past them thinking he won the fight and Luffy's about to fall and he catches himself and everything from that moment, remembering what Usopp said, remembering that he, he wasn't going to hit the ground unless he won and then letting out that scream and the face that Luchi hit in that moment was literally my face as I was watching it. Like eyes wide as hell, looking at the screen like Leonardo DiCaprio pointing and then Luffy hit him with the craziest Gatling that one of the up to this point the craziest Gatling that he's ever hit, and the way that they put it in slow motion, showing all of his fists connect basically at the same time, just showing how fast and how much he was putting into that final barrage of blows, sending Luchi through the wall. It was amazing, and that's how you end the arc right there. So that's how you end the arc. I'll definitely put that at number two. Shit, I respect that. Like, we've said it multiple times on this channel. We'll say it again. That is easily, and crazy to even say easily, just because of how many amazing ones there are. But, hey, that is easily one of the greatest, if not the greatest finisher in One Piece. Like, we think it is just because the scream, the chills, everything. Mm -hmm. Everything that was in that moment was just fantastic. Like, I can hear it right now. That shit was just amazing, how he finished that nigga. Hell like, yeah. I definitely respect that at your number two. Shit. At my number two, you already said it, but just to say it again, I have Luffy punching the Celestial Dragon. Like, I'm not gonna lie, that moment was just fantastic. That nigga sent him back to the manga. Like, and he deserved it. So it was also extremely satisfying. And I think that elevated the scene as well. But it didn't need to elevate the scene just because how amazing it was when you want to consider everything going in. Like, everyone's reaction in this show was the exact same as everyone's reaction outside of the show watching. Like, that's what made it that much more amazing just because. This nigga Luffy really punched the Celestial Dragon. That's like punching a world noble, which mm. he literally did. Like, that shit was just amazing and different. And I would say it's one of the moments that told you Luffy was different, but it's not even out of character for him. It's just bold as fuck. Yeah, so. it's bold as shit. Because he knew the consequences. It's not like he didn't know and hit that nigga. He already knew, like, what would happen because Hachi told him right before he did it, like, don't do yeah. it. The admirals are going to come. And he said, fuck all that. I'm sending this nigga. I've never seen. And maybe it was because of how early I've watched One Piece into my anime career. But I still haven't seen that before or since. So I don't know if it's even that. But I've never seen a nigga get sent back to the manga like that. 
Not like that. Not like that. So, definitely one of the best moments in One Piece, 100%. But my number one favorite One Piece moment, this was really hard to decide. I'm not going to lie. But it actually takes place in my favorite One Piece episode, 1015. Oh. This episode was literal cinema. It was movie quality in Wano. And it really stamped Luffy arriving to that door of being top tier. So, at number one, I have Luffy's Red Rock. Mm. Everything around that scene. All of the uh, the other four on the rooftop arriving before him saying, Where's Straw Hat? He walks up, to, he runs up the stairs punches through that shit like he's punching through the door to being top tier pulls up on the scene kaido and big mom are standing right there the crazy ass red lighting and luffy star walking and he walks smooth past two juggernaut built yonkos mm. to go tend to kinemon and kinemon said can you carry the lanoino on your back he said of course i will it's my friend's country and Kaido was about to send that nigga to the Shadow Realm. You know, Yonkos don't fight fair. So, he was about to send that nigga to the Shadow Realm. Law moves everyone downstairs. And Luffy hit that nigga with a new move. Because we've never seen him use that before. So, that ex- that amplified the scene even more than it was. He's never used that move. I don't even think he's used it since. So that was a that, I'm pretty sure that was the only time he's ever used it. So... That also adds to it, but just hitting that nigga and planting him in the ground. You see the frost fly off the mountain. Everything about that scene was absolute cinema. So, I had to put that at number one. Yeah, I definitely respect that. Red Rock. Ooh! Like, I'm not gonna lie. That entire episode was The cinema. whole episode. That is my favorite One Piece episode. Like, I, I respect that. I definitely respect that. And when you want to talk about that moment, like, easily one of the greatest Luffy moments as well as one of the greatest One Piece moments. Easily. So I definitely respect that at your number one. Like, like you said, that moment was the moment that said, yo, I've arrived. I'm here type shit. Put respect on my name. He rocked Kaido. Like, that shit was amazing. I wish he did it to Big Mom, too. But that shit was just fantastic. And I definitely, once again, respect that at your number one. But uh, my number one, we're staying in Wano. This moment was just by default different. And it's kind of crazy because of how late in the game it is for One Piece. But this moment transformed One Piece just because it transformed everything. Even though One Piece was already king of anime. This one made it undebatable. But at, for me, at number one, I would have to put Gear 5th. Like, Gear 5th was a very amazing moment. And it was also a proud dad moment. Like, that shit really had me ready to tear up, even though nothing sad happened. All we saw was Luffy just complete himself and complete his uh, grind. Like, he mastered his devil fruit and got the gear with uh, devil fruit awakening. Like it was very amazing to see, especially how it happened. Like, I mean, the nigga literally came back to life, but that shit was literally just amazing. Watching everyone's reaction, seeing Kaido's reaction. Then you want to throw in the whole fight, but just the gear fifth debut itself. Like you want to talk about cinemas. That was literally a cinema episode. Like, We watched it like it was a Super Bowl. Like, I'm not going to lie. That was easily one of my favorite Luffy moments. And it's just by default my favorite One Piece moment. Hell yeah. That, like, when you want to talk about cinema, the whole transformation, they gave Gear 5 transformation like eight minutes of the episode. The transformation itself, they gave it like eight minutes. Yeah, yeah. You like just they him. emphasized just how massive of a thing this is. They even showed the world government reacting to it, like uh, this is Joy Boy and all of that, Sun God Nika, everything that goes around Gear Five and Luffy's Devil Fruit. 
they emphasized it as much as they possibly could before giving us the absolute smackdown that he gave Kaido in the second half of the episode, just showing how busted of an ability Gear 5 really was. Yanking that nigga like a garden snake, slamming him on his shit like Tom and Jerry. Like, yeah. this shit was crazy. Jaw dropped the whole episode. I by default respect Gear 5 at number one, 100%. Hell yeah, hell yeah. But, hey man, that's our top three favorite One Piece moments. Let us know your top three favorite One Piece moments. But just to segue to the last question, this one you got to take with a grain of salt because the answer is obvious, but we're going to go in on why. But the last question is, what tier slash grade would you give to One Piece? Like, it's by default S tier, 100 out of 100. But... I guess the reason why is just kind of because every single finger is an S tier 100 out of 100. Like, the story writing is arguably king of story writing. Not arguable. Not arguable. Not even arguable. Like, Oda is the king of story writing. Like, One Piece is the king of it just by default. You want to talk about characters, we already said it, but One Piece has the greatest bag of characters. You want to talk about relatability, we already said it, but... One Piece is extremely relatable to the real world, as well as to personal selves. Then you want to talk about scene execution. It's a joke, but One Piece is easily a 100 out of 10 in that category. And when you want to talk about creativity, One Piece is the most creative anime ever. So, easily One Piece deserves an S tier in ranking. And 100 out of 100. But, I guess if you had to still wonder why the best thing i could say is watch one piece hell yeah watch one piece if you haven't because you're in for a long journey and a, a long amazing journey oda is the king of story writing everything that ties together is fantastic like when you start one piece you're gonna have questions right and I'm sitting here thinking at the beginning of One Piece, oh, there's already so many, like, strange things that I don't understand. And I keep going, oh, like, what? how does that make sense? And as I keep going and all of my questions get answered, it's like, dog, Oda's an actual mastermind. Like, the way that he manipulates the story so that there's foreshadowing even if it was not intended at the time then it turns into foreshadowing when we get some shit later like that type of shit is so insane to me that he's able to think of something so amazing and so creative because there is damn near nothing from another anime that it, one piece took from damn near nothing there's so, really nothing truth be told literally so it's like one Piece is amazing. As you said, all five fingers hit 100 out of 100. 100 out of 10, really. Like, mm -hmm. watch One Piece. That's that's just the best I can give you, honestly. Because if, if we try to sit here and truly explain this in depth, we'd be here all fucking night. So, watch One yeah. Piece. Hell yeah, hell yeah. But, hey man, this is the Legends of One Piece. Let us know what you think about everything we've talked about so far, and let us know why is One Piece legendary to you in the comments? Vice versa, if you enjoyed this video, hit that sub button and share this video with a friend. Hell yeah. Vice versa, make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next Legends video or any of our other special videos. We drop straight bangers on this channel, so make sure you guys tap in with us. With that being said, make sure you guys hit that uh, so it's description. There'll be two links waiting for you. One will take you to all of our socials, Sons of Tokyo on every platform. The other one will take you to our Discord. You come can, on in. Come on in. You know what I'm saying? Join that Discord. Come vibe out with us. Talk about anything. Anime, not anime, sports, movies. It don't matter. But uh, yeah, man. With that being said, SOT out.